So ever since Blender version 4.0 was released, I've gotten many comments on my videos of people wondering how they can change the subsurface color. Because in the latest version of Blender 4.0, you can see the principled shader has been changed a little bit, and if I open up the subsurf, you can see there isn't any subsurface color. Whereas in Blender version 3.6.5, there was this subsurface color right here. So this here is the tutorial result from my procedural skin material, link will be in the description if you'd like to check out that tutorial. And in the tutorial I set the subsurface color to red because when skin has light going through it, it becomes a red color. And then I can change the amount of subsurface with this value here. So when people are following my older videos, they don't know what to do about the subsurface color. And this is because in the new version of Blender, the subsurface scattering uses the base color instead for the subsurface color. And I will have a link in the video description if you'd like to read this page on the Blender wiki. You can see right here it says subsurface scattering uses the base color instead instead of a separate color input. Now, I've just opened up my procedural skin material in Blender version 4.0, and you can see that Blender has automatically updated this older Blender file to the new version of Blender 4.0. And you can see right here in the material, it has added this mixed color node in between the base color and the principal shader. And so what it's done is it's added this mixed color node, and then it's taken our original color and it's plugged that into color A. And then it's taken the subsurface color, which was this red color, and it's put it here into color B, and that is going into the base color. Now there is a factor here, and the factor is determining how much of color A and how much of color B it's going to use. So you can use this slider here to control the amount of subsurface color. So if I want to make this skin look much more red and have more subsurface, I can turn this factor up, or I can turn it down if I want to be more of that tannish peachy color. So that is one way to add and control a subsurface color within Blender version 4.0. You can add a mixed color node, and you can mix it here into the base color and you can add the color that you want. In this case, I have a red color. Now, another way to do this is to simply change the base color to a slightly more red color if you're creating skin, for example. So let me just unplug this mix color here, and then I'm gonna take this peachy color and I will drop it here into the base color of the shader. But I could take this base color and I could just make it a little bit more red, and then I could also use this scale value here under the subsurface tab, so I could turn that scale up to give it even more subsurface, and now there's so much subsurface that it kind of looks looks like a waxy material. Now another way that you could control the colors of the subsurface scattering is to change the radius here. So underneath the subsurface there are three different methods, and so for this example here I'm going to use skin, and when it's set to skin it's automatically changed these three different values to 1, 0.2, and 0.1. Now these three values here on the radius are the red, green, and blue values of the subsurface. So if I turn up the first value on the subsurface scattering it's going to add more red. So you can see now the skin looks much more red. And then the second one is green, so I could turn this way up and you can see now there's a bit more green. Or the third one here, that is blue, so I could turn that up as well. So if you're following along with any of my older tutorials and you don't have the subsurface color in Blender 4.0, those are three different ways that you can control the color. You can add a mix node and mix in the subsurface color. You can simply change the actual base color and make it more of the subsurface color that you want. Or you can also change the subsurface radius right here. So I hope you found this video helpful helpful and thank you for watching. And if you'd like to learn how to create procedural materials in Blender, then definitely check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist here on YouTube. The link is in the description. But I hope you found this helpful and thank you for watching.